Very well. Thank you, Gustavo. I appreciate the introduction. It's great to be here and great to have this opportunity to um, share a little bit about low carbon technologies, uh, who we are, what we do, and, and why it matters. Um, low carbon technologies is the wholly owned uh, sustainability division of Select Sires, um, who is in turn the global leader in bovine genetics and the AI industry. So um, I'll start with um, our mission statement. And um, at Low Carbon Technologies, our mission is to help agricultural producers contribute to improved sustainability through reduced greenhouse gas emissions while earning a premium for their low carbon production practices. So when we think about the three fundamental pillars of sustainability, environmental, economic, and social, I think you can pretty quickly start to see how um, from a, from a brand positioning perspective, how low carbon technologies aligns to the three fundamental uh, pillars of sustainability and um, what we intend to do. So, um, you know, I think sustainability is really about balance, right? So uh, solutions have to provide what consumers want. It's, it's critical that, that we start there, that sustainability solutions provide what consumers want what animals need and ultimately do so with less environmental impact. So achieving this balance is obviously the, the, the challenging part. And um, so consequently uh, for us to reach our full potential, um, it's really about focusing on solutions that position LCT right at that core intersection of the three pillars of sustainability. Um, I think it goes without saying that sustainability goes well beyond environmental stewardship. Um, sustainability has to start with economic sustainability. Economic sustainability has to be the primary focus of, of any sustainability initiative, in my view. Um, without economic sustainability, obviously, by definition, um, you know, we're, we're challenged to move anything forward in 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 a uh in in any kind of recurring revenue or positive way so our focus has to be on adding value to our producers in in that approach and ultimately uh from a social aspect sustainability will certainly not evolve by telling consumers what they can or cannot eat so um that's kind of how we have um begun to focus the the uh, work of low carbon technologies and the position we're, we're taking in, in the three pillars of sustainability. When we somewhat superimpose that into uh, more of an ecosystem of, of select sires, the core business that, that owns low carbon technologies, um, we believe that, that our business is, is not only uh, appropriate, to be in the sustainable space, but uh, it's the only responsible thing that we could do is to get heavily involved in, in sustainability initiatives and lead those initiatives in a way that centers low carbon technologies between the programs that we bring to market, the solutions that our team creates and the service we deliver to the marketplace. So from a solutions perspective, it's it's the genetic solutions that um, that the select sires team has has led the globe in terms of of innovation and bringing um, you know unique programs to to the marketplace like our HHP dollars uh, index that genetically is is the index that is the most superior in the marketplace today. Um, it's about leveraging those natural synergies between programs that we deliver, um, like our branded beef on dairy program, uh, which we refer to as profit source, and the programs that low carbon technologies will bring to market, programs like our low carbon beef program, our low carbon dairy program, leveraging strategic partnerships uh, that we've brought in and ultimately bringing to the marketplace certified low carbon product in a consumer facing way. So um, 
This is where we really believe that uh, low carbon technologies positions well within a traditional ag business and why it's appropriate. And, and the only responsible thing for us to do is to be in this space in a leading position. If we, if we uh, looked back um, over history and, and just kind of uh, followed a, a little bit of the US beef trends, um, some pretty interesting trends have emerged. In 1970, the US had about 140 million head of beef. By comparison today, we're down to 90 million head. And yet in both 1970 and in 2010, about 24 million tons of beef were produced. So pretty significant trend that I think you can see um, kind of what, what's uh, happening in terms of carbon footprint. Um, when you also look at, at U.S. dairy over, over uh, a period of time, in, in 1950, there were nearly 25 million dairy cows in the U.S., Today, we're down to 9 million dairy cows. With 16 million fewer cows from 1950 to 2018, milk production has actually increased by 60%. Alarming production increases and productivity improvements, primarily out of genetics led by select sires. The carbon footprint of a glass of milk is two thirds smaller today than it was 70 years ago. So clearly there has been a tremendous amount of work done to reduce greenhouse gas emissions just through the industry trends. However, while much has been done, we can and must do more to continue improving on greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the chart here at the right sh shows uh, a breakdown of, of greenhouse gas emissions by, by sector. And, um, you know, we, we, um, we tend to hear and listen and, and focus on um, the, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions coming out of cattle. And, and not to say that it's not significant, we certainly can do more, but uh, livestock and manure management make up about 5.8% of total. So clearly uh, greenhouse gas emissions are led by the energy sector and by industry um, uh, when, you, when you combine the two. But um, globally, agriculture remains the second largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. 13% of carbon dioxide, 44% of methane, 81% of nitrous oxide. Um, agriculture is also the largest producer of ammonia, um, which while not being a green, considered a greenhouse gas in the U.S., um, it is in the EU, and it's certainly an air pollutant and a precursor to uh, fine particulate matter that, that creates uh, significant health, health issues. Um, so what this really uh, translates to, when, when you look at Forbes' list of the top 2,000 companies globally, a full 1,000 of those 2,000 top companies on a global scale have made a sustainability pledge by date certain, either 2030, 40, or 50. And yet many of them, as you start to look at this uh, at the chart, many of them are in sectors where they are not only the largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, they're also in industry sectors where they have very little ability to meet their greenhouse gas emission pledges to become net carbon neutral um, by pledge date by reducing them through their own operations. So where will those, where will those um, net zero claims be met? In part, we believe they'll be met by the carbon that can be captured through agriculture and monetized through, through agriculture. So as we begin to look at that, um, it's why uh, Select Sires and Low Carbon Technologies was created. Um, again, we are a wholly owned division of Select Sires. 
and we were formed in December of 2022. Um, initially, with a tradition, with a focus on traditional beef production. Um, since that time, we have quickly expanded our view and and our our uh, reach to include beef on dairy, dairy, um, swine, poultry, and crop are all three on our roadmap forward as we begin to leverage our science-based methodology to, to create sustainable solutions. What do we do? Low Carbon Technologies operates as a third-party verification company. Um, we certify that beef and dairy produced with, we certify beef and dairy that is produced with reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we do so in, in a very uh, unique and different way than what we've seen in the industry. Today, we are the first and only USDA approved process verified program. So our science methodology has been heavily scrutinized by the USDA and granted accreditation, uh, making us the only USDA approved program and um, something that I think certainly differentiates us in the marketplace. Our approach to, to certifying cattle and bringing the, these cattle to market um, spans again from conventional beef to, to dairy beef or beef on dairy. Um, we primarily focus on four key areas, feed, fuel, fertilization, and function of, of, the, of the calf or the animal. Um, we, we focus on management practices and cattle performance, which is obviously heav heavily driven through genetics and believe that we can produce um, calves that, that have a lower greenhouse gas emission, um, raising them, getting them through the packing process, bringing them through a retail network to the consumer with premiums to be made by everyone throughout that supply chain. Our life cycle assessment model is based on uh, ISO and IPCC guidelines that are regularly updated. Um, the primary objective of our models to consistently compare performance among different animals in a variety of production systems using the same, the same model. So clearly that gives us the opportunity to really compare an apples to apples uh, type comparison and, and quantify in a very unbiased way across the four pathways that we've identified, uh, backgrounding, direct entry to feedlot, grass-fed, and dairy beef. So when we, when we think about how and, and look at the traditional value stream here, um, it really doesn't matter whether you are a traditional beef producer, a dairy producer, or beef on dairy producer, as, as kind of depicted here. Um, the traditional value stream meant that you sold your product, either milk or meat, to the processor or packer, who in turn... Um, you know, fabricated or processed that, that product and, and in turn sold that product to food distribution, restaurants, retailers, and ultimately to consumers, the traditional value exchange. What we're bringing to market is, is an incremental value stream that is driven by our certification. So um, the way that low carbon technologies will monetize is, is through either our low carbon beef program or our low carbon dairy program um, by certifying the low carbon practice and low carbon production of these animals and, and of the milk that allows us to bring to market premium positioned product that the consumer is willing to pay a premium for. In addition to that, we bring a new value stream to the marketplace as well by capturing and quantifying uh, carbon in a way that will allow the, the producer to sell that carbon, either carbon credit or carbon inset, to the marketplace through a, through a carbon platform or through a carbon inset um, with, with partners in the supply chain. If we look at that uh, uh, 
uh, through, through another graphic, essentially um, low carbon technologies is focused on monetizing this opportunity in two parallel paths to revenue. The first being a premium position um, consumer product lineup where our low carbon certified seal will, will appear on product packaging to elicit the trust and credibility of product being sustainably produced for the consumer audience that wants that. So it's everything from uh, beef to milk, yogurt, cheese, whey product, ice cream, et cetera. And, and we believe uh, through our research that, that, that a growing uh, segment of consumers want this product and are willing to pay a premium for product that is, that is certified sustainably produced. Conversely, there's another pathway to monetizing the opportunity and it's by um, monetizing the carbon credit that comes along with the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So um, as, a, as a third party uh, verifying company, we're in position to both do that measurement and quantification on behalf of the programs and stakeholders and either monetize that carbon credit as a commodity or monetize the carbon inset as a premium that will follow the animal through the supply chain. So why does this certification matter? Well, certification matters because it allows product differentiation for all stakeholders in the, in, the, in the value chain. It allows consumers to identify and purchase the sustainably produced product that they're looking for. It allows sellers to earn a premium for high quality product offerings that meet those consumer demands. And it provides the economic incentive for the producers to actually produce low carbon, sustainably produced product with reduced emissions. So while this marketplace is, is quickly changing and there are a lot of people rushing to the market to, to make claims, um, we've been very intentionally, um, I'll say intentionally uh, slow to the marketplace to make sure that our science-based methodology is where it needs to be that we have the product uh, in, in the accreditation of the USDA and, and, and others before we bring product to market, because the last thing we wanna do is join a growing list of greenwashed claims and, and other providers that are out there that have rushed to market only to find themselves on the headline of newspapers around the, around the country and, and um, you know, claims that they're now stepping back from um, retracting and unfortunately finding themselves in major litigation as a result of, of claims that are unsubstantiated. So the, the, the differentiation of our science-based methodology is what gives us um, the bold and, and very uh, bearish figure towards um, looking at the industry and where, where we know that we'll be able to take this. So ultimately consumers are the ones though that have the deciding vote, right? Consumers care about sustainability and they back it up with their wallet. 85% of consumers say they're concerned about the carbon footprint of their food. 78% of US consumers say sustain, a sustainable lifestyle is important to them. And 69% of consumers say they're willing to pay more for sustainably produced products. We'll pause there for a moment because that's always an interesting, um, always an interesting research uh, learning when you hear someone is willing to pay more for something because it's one thing to say they are. Um, another, when, when they're actually faced with that purchase decision at point of sale, right? So if you look at, at the bottom graphic, retail sales growth, the U.S. compound annual growth rate or CAGR between 2018 and 2022, products that did not have an ESGA-related claim um, on the top in dark blue um, were outpaced by products with an ESGA-related claim at, at about 26.6% faster growth rate. So 
what that says is that retail sales are, are actually validated. Consumers are not only saying they're willing to pay more, they actually are making that purchase decision at point of sale. They're choosing to pay more for the products that, that they want and they say they're, that they care about. So um, who are these consumers? Well, it's primarily driven by Gen Z. 41% of Gen Z say they're willing to change their lifestyle to live a more environmentally friendly way. And 67% have already changed their purchase decisions. If you, if you look at uh, Gen Z research at all, you can also see um, kind of the trajectory that Gen Z is on in terms of buying power as the young as this younger demographic is emerging in in the professional working space have the most significant uh trajectory for buying power and and that's not going to change in 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 the foreseeable future so um, this is a group that will drive the way that product is is purchased uh, a group that is is demanding sustainably produced product and today, there's certainly a significant shortage of that kind of product. So how do we bring it to market? Well, Low Carbon Technologies Gene Net Marketing Grid um, really offers uh, premiums to the, for those beef on, dairy, beef on dairy genetics and our certification premium as well. So we've got an opportunity in the marketplace to go out, identify the genetically superior cattle that we know we've already produced from the core business, leveraging this profit source beef on dairy genetic program that we have and bring those cattle into a calf ranch on into a feedlot and grow them out to prepare them for the supply chain partners and the packing partners that, that we've aligned with. Um, this is a real life example of an existing customer of Low Carbon Technologies, a uh, uh, packing company by the name of Dean and Peeler um, down in Texas. And Dean and Peeler is, is bringing to market um, the first low carbon certified beef product. And, and that will be introduced through the Central Market Grocery Store, which is a division of HEB Grocery. And will carry, a, will carry with it the low carbon technologies uh, certified seal um, in, in central market grocery stores before the end of the year. So this isn't something that um, is conceptual. It's not something that we're hoping to do someday down the road. This is happening. Consumers are demanding that it's happening and we're bringing it to market. So, in, in a very similar way, um, if I backed up here to this supply chain, in a very similar way that this supply chain uh, graphic depicts, we could also bring this product to market through, through, the, through the feedlots, through the packing partner, only to find um, a partner that is not really wanting to bring a sustainably produced product, labeled product to the marketplace but wanting to take that carbon inset that comes with the animal and, and quantify that carbon inset in a way that it offsets um, their carbon footprint in other operations to become more net zero, closer to net zero goals. So um, the parallel path to revenue is a path and a business strategy that we've adopted that we think um, is, is one that aligns quite well to what we're doing. Um, and, and so when we, when we dissect kind of uh, segments of the business that we're, that we're engaging, um, Low Carbon Technologies does consulting services for governmental agencies, universities, and companies. Um, a, an example of that would certainly be our USDA Climate Smart Grant Partnership that, that uh, our science team is leading. Um, we are recipients of a $10 million uh, Climate Smart grant. And through that grant, uh, bringing, bringing uh, a demonstration to the marketplace of how we can reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 50% over a five-year period. Um, 
Obviously, I talked about the producer programs and the processor uh, and retail partnerships that we're bringing to market as well. And um, so that's that's kind of where we're at today. And with that, um, I think I got us to the 30-minute mark here and, and open us up for some questions, Gisalo.